at the end of the webinar, we'll have contact information um, to contact the Stock Aid Group for any further questions, anything like that. Um, to ask a question, this is a, an image of your uh, GoToMeeting console, GoToWebinar console. And it looks like this. The green hash mark upper left is um, referencing the orange arrow. The orange arrow is your min, minimize and maximize arrow. You want to minimize that, obviously, when you're watching the presentation, but you want to maximize it to ask a question. And to do that, you type your questions down by that purple hash on the bottom left, and be sure and hit the send key just below that box. We encourage you to type, to, to ask as many questions as you'd like, because this is your opportunity. Um, anything and everything, uh, and we'll answer as many of them as we can. But if we can answer them, if we don't have time, or um, we'll get back to you with answers to your specific questions. So don't hesitate to ask us anything. Um, and then uh, towards the end, um, uh, or in the middle or so, Joe, Bill, be sure and ask, you know, remind people to ask the questions there, anybody who comes on late. So with that, um, I'm going to present today's speakers. Bill Doherty is the CEO of the Stock Aid Group, and Joe Battisti is the COO, and uh, they founded the Stock Aid. You know what? I'm going to let them tell you, because they know the presentation time here. Thanks for coming on, Joe. Um, they know uh, uh, more about themselves than I'll ever know, even though I consider them and call them friends. Joe, why don't you take over? And uh, be sure and let me know when you want the slides, uh, and we'll go from there. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, I'll just give a quick background of myself, and then I'll turn it over to Bill and allow him to do the same thing. Um, Bill is not um, uh, on a computer at this point, uh, so you won't be able to see him today, but, but um, you'll be able to hear his voice, and uh, he'll be able to, co to contribute to the overall uh, presentation today. Um, I started back in, in call centers back a good 15, almost 20 years ago now, and uh, worked my way up you know, right from the phone, being a call agent in a variety of different outbound, inbound settings. Um, you know, the old 9X is, is really where I, I really originally started from, uh, moving into long distance and, and uh, caller ID services, um, selling those services over the phone. I very quickly um, learned the different ropes in, within a call center, becoming a trainer and becoming a coach and becoming a verifier and, you know, doing all the different pieces of, of what it takes to run a, a solid call center. Um, and I did that in a variety of different places and uh, did that for, like I said, almost 20 years now. And back around um, 2008, um, you know, Bill and I decided to, to go down the route of, of, of starting a, a company really focused on, on one vertical, your vertical, the higher education uh, sector, and really looking at ways that we can help uh, provide contact center ser services, professional services, uh, to assist you in doing all the different constituent engagement services that you need to, to accomplish throughout the year. And uh, that's why we're all here today, to talk about not only uh, the, who the Stock Aid Group is, but some of the things that are on your minds um, on how to improve what you do today um, on campus with your phone-a-thon, whether it's on campus or, or off. Um, so, so thank you for being here. Uh, Bill. Hi, everyone. Um, well, I pretty much the same path has been traveled by me, as uh, Joe just explained, except mine goes back 50 years. That's uh, pretty much the only difference. Um, the reason that we joined together is the reason that uh, Joe gave. I uh, had my own companies before that, um, working in higher ed for now 22 years. Uh, started out on the admissions side of the house and, and uh, worked there for two or three years and discovered that um, development was something that we could also um, do and uh, did that. Um, I had another partner at the time, and we, um, he came up with the idea of uh, doing what we're doing right now, today, and that is uh, hosting services with colleges and universities throughout the country where they use their students or alumni to do the calling. So that pretty much brings you up to date uh, for both of us, 
And uh, if you have any questions, by the way, at the end, please do not hesitate to ask. This is for you. This is not really about us. It's about you. And uh, so the questions that come are, are very helpful to us and helpful to others that have joined us in the uh, webinar. The Cup of Joe, uh, I, this is a good slide to just remind a, a service that we, we currently offer. I hope many of you are, are currently getting it. Um, this is a, um, a new source um, that we provide every day um, of pertinent articles that are from our, from your, our industry, um, whether it's on the fundraising side or on the enrollment management side. Um, we share that to all of you, and, and we hope that uh, more of you, if you're not on it today, are, are gaining access to it. Um, and here's a couple of links that you can find um, that mail distribution. So please join us, and uh, hopefully the, those new sources and those articles will be very helpful to you. Next slide. Okay, well, to start off, I'd like to, I like to always try to start off in, in just kind of reminding everybody, well, what's the purpose of our meeting today? Um, what's our agenda? What are we going to be, hopefully, going to be learning? Why are you here today? Um, so I think, I think first, I'd like to try to incorporate um, and keep you guys, you know, keep all of you really involved in this overall um, agenda of the, of the meeting today. So please, if at first, these are a variety of probably different reasons why some of you are here today. Of, of automating your phonathon um, in some way, um, or if it's increased goals, more participation, probably all of the above. And you're here today to figure out how the Stockade Group can help you. If there's other reasons that you're here today, um, you know, please throw them throw them in the question box, and we'll get to it so that we can address it at some point. Um, again, you know, the, these are things that are probably on everybody's mind. Um, what is it that you're that you're trying to accomplish on in your own student phonathon, uh, um, you know your your own campaign today, um, and these are the, some of the items that are the common items that are constantly coming up that we're looking to overcome. Let's go to the next slide. So what are we doing today? Um, it could be a little bit of both of these of these types of items. You're, you could be outsourcing your campaign to a professional organization, and you're now considering a different way of going about it. Perhaps bringing it back on campus. Um, we're starting a, a student phonathon for the first time. You can, um, with with as as many people as you can get to get involved, whether it's faculty, students, uh, volunteers. And like I said, maybe it's a little bit of both. Obviously, dialing manually uh, really keeps it keeps it uh, very difficult to to get through as many, as much of the list as you can. Um, you can't really track everything. So again, these are probably some of the things that you're you're trying to use to accomplish your 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 goals today. Um, if you're doing something different, again, please throw throw it in your box. Let us know what you are up to today, um, so that we can start to begin and building a customized program for you. I think to put things in context here, if uh, one is to go back when I started with um, colleges and universities throughout the country, we did dial manually then. And we had what were called tick sheets, and we'd have to do all the counting and, and the, the reporting the next day. Everything was faxed. It uh, didn't go through the Internet. So it really is a very cumbersome uh, and it's not a cost-effective way of um, communicating with your alumni. So that's what we're here today to discuss, not so much what we as a company can do for you, but what you can do for yourself with the help of a company like ours. Let's have the next slide, please. So what are the things that are on your mind? You know, why would you not automate? Uh, what are the obstacles that are in front of you? Um, so again, some of these are the, these are the common items that that we hear um, all the time that you, you need to overcome some of these some of these some of these issues. Um, you know, not having enough room. You know, thinking it's may, it may be too expensive to run. Not having the experience uh, to run a call center. Um, not having the kind of time or support that it's going to take uh, to get the job done. Are there others? 
Are there other items on your mind that you need to deal with that we haven't listed here? Please, you know, go to go in there and, and let us know. One of the things that come to my mind is, is there a cultural fit between uh, using students and uh, all of the things that most people are going to take place in a call center? Uh, I'll give you a case in point. We work with uh, many institutions where they do use students, and we do all what's called the back room operation for them, meaning we supply the reports. We do the scripting along with uh, consultation with them. But all of the um, back room work is done for them. All they have to do is the student comes in, sits down in front of a computer, and a keystroke, and they're off and running. And they supply the uh, enthusiasm and the reason to do what they're doing. So um, there's a couple different ways of doing it. You can do it yourself. Um, I don't suggest that's the way to do it. Many, many people that we speak with um, even ask if they can spend a day with us or we can spend a couple days with them, and, and we do. Uh, we sit down and we go through each of these items, these reasons, these expenses, what it's going to take to open up, what it's going to, it's, and it really needs a partnership, be it us or anyone else that, uh, that is suggested. You have peer groups that you speak with and you can find information from them and they can suggest people that to talk with. Do so, not just us, but uh, anyone and find out really what it takes to run a call center. And if you, there are two, two major ways of doing it. One, where you have a manager come in and they sit there and they uh, manage the whole thing for you. That's extremely expensive. The other way is how we do it. And, and that's, um, uh, we have professional services and uh, it's virtual care, we call it. And we're helping you every every night. We're online with you. And then there's a third way, actually, and that's where you do it all yourself. I don't ever uh, say that that's the way you should go about it, but uh, some people do that. So why don't we go to the next slide? So now we uncovered already some of the some of the issues that might be on your mind. I think the next question is always, well, okay, well, where where would you start? How do you determine? Uh, putting this together, answering some of these questions, and overcoming some of the objections. So let's go through some of the some of the things that you'd want to start with. Um, we've listed a few here. Uh, when and who are we going to be calling? What's our calling timeline? Is essentially what we're saying here. Um, we've seen a variety of different ways of going out about it. Obviously, depending on your fiscal year, um, you could be either just getting started um, in this coming fall or you could be coming to an end if you're on a calendar year-end fiscal year. Um, we always will recommend um, having two different time periods. And we'll get into the spring, the fall, and using both. And, and who do we call and when um, will be addressed. Determining the space needed, one of the items that is constantly up is like, well, boy, you know, we just don't have a lot of space. Real estate is, is uh, you know, a, a, a commodity that we just don't have enough of. Um, so how, how, many space, how much space do we need? How many, how many students do we need? Um, and all that will, can be easily determined uh, through customizing your program. Identifying the, your team leaders, um, who's going to be managing your people, and what's that going to take. Ensuring that you're doing all the right things. I mean, that could be another issue that it might be on your mind is, well, yeah, OK, well, we have our space. We have the number of people that we need to call. But are we doing things the right way? And how do we know? Um, so those are the things that you need to start addressing, and that's all into the, the overall collaboration that you will need to have with, with someone assisting you in, in making this all happen. Go to the next slide. So let's start with the when and the who. As I started to begin, you know, begin, begin saying is we, we're making some recommendations here on how you want to at least first approach in building your list in building your, your calendar or your timeline of when you want to make these calls happen. Um, first, we, we definitely would want to have two separate calling periods. Um, there's reasons for that. Uh, one is that the more that you can accomplish in the earlier part of your fiscal year, 
then it'll allow you more time later in that fiscal year to do different things. And we'll get into what those different things are in, in a moment. Um, two, obviously with, with, with that said too, with the, the multiple calling periods, you'll want to take into account all of your other appeals and tactics that, you, that you'll be putting in place. So is direct mail going out? When is that going out? When are your students going to be available? All your other communications and events that you're going to be having throughout the year. You'll want to take a look at that and, and build that into your overall timeline. Including all prior donors would be obviously your first, uh, your first thrust, right? Those are your people that you'll, you'll hopefully be able to convert at the highest rate. Uh, you'll want to use those uh, folks in your, in your direct mail appeals. And then a timely follow-up with your outbound calling is, is your first thrust. Live months right through your lapsed, or at least through your side month segments. Your lapsed, long lapsed, and non-donor segments may require more of a custom plan. You'll, it'll probably be your largest segments um, in, those, in those, bottom, uh, those bottom segments there. Um, so what we may need to really take a look at who's the best sections to call um, and incorporate into your, into your automated phonathon. Because, um, you know, time will be, uh, you know, of the essence here. You'll want to make sure that you're spending the right amount of time with the right amount of segments. So you'll want to take a look at those segments, at, at a, at a, have a separate view of those, and determine how many we'll include and when you'll want to include those in your outbound calls. Incorporating parents and friends, those, those are an option that, that, are, that are there for you. Some schools will incorporate them, some will not. Um, so you'll be taking a look at what you have in terms of those databases and making them a part of your overall plan. And then the last item that we have listed here is incorporating the thank yous, the thank you calls, the reunions, event calling, <laughs> soft refusals. Soft refusals are those that perhaps you reached a few months, few months earlier, let's say in the fall, you reach them, they indicated that maybe now is not the right time, um, they, they may give in the future, uh, maybe you just, you know, again, you just reach them at the wrong time. If you reach them two, three, four months later, that's a soft refusal, and that would be a perfect time to call them in spring before the end of the fiscal year. Soft reminder calls, all about fulfillment, right? So you might want to be doing those 30, 45 days after the initial pledge or at least at, different, at two different times, two key times during that year. One is before the end of the calendar year, and then one is before the end of your fiscal year. Those might be the same time, so you'll have to, you know, you'll have to work that out. But if you could, incorporating 30 to 45 days after that pledge letter is going out with a timely reminder call might, might very, make, very well make a, a great impact on your overall fulfillment rates. So that's a, that's a good start on the when and the who. And I think that probably many of you are doing many of what we're discussing right now, and good for you. That's a, that's a good start. But once you switch over to automation, it becomes a much more fast-paced environment, meaning that everything happens quickly. Um, what took you, uh, let's use days for example, what took you 10 days to do something, uh, call a particular file, might only take you five with automation. So lots of different things happen there. Um, of course your payroll goes down, that's one thing that happens. Uh, the other thing is, is that you don't have to spend an entire year in many cases working this. Um, Many people uh, incorporate uh, admissions. They say, well, do you want to use um, our systems for a while? That happens, but that's a whole other discussion. But it, it's, it, it allows you to do things that you haven't been able to do and to do all of the recommendations that you see there much more thoroughly than you can do them now. And that's really what automation is all about. When you add to that, counseling or virtual care as what we do, then you really have a win-win situation. Um, so let's have the next slide. Go on to the next slide from here. So now we know the when and the who. You've, you've begun to see a calendar kind of unfolding. Um, you now need to understand, well, okay, how long is it going to take us? How many students do I need? Um, how many hours? Does, might that require? Um, so, so this is an example. 
Um, this is just a sample plan um, that you can kind of use to, to, to determine how long it will take you to get through your campaign. So I started with a file size of 10,000 callable records. This is the number of records, again, that you have at least one or more valid phone number, or at least we hope it's valid, right? Um, the number of weeks of calling based on a 10,000 list size is about 12 weeks, it's about three months. And that's assuming that you have five shifts per week, um, three hours per shift. Now, what that means in, in terms of number of hours that you'll actually be spending in labor will equate to approximately 850 to 900 hours. The student call stations would be five, so to, to complete those hours, and obviously you'd want to have at least one supervisor call stations to manage that group of five every day to be able to monitor and coach and watch performance making those list strategies, decisions, um, and so on. So this is a good, a good sample to, to size your campaign and determine the number of students you may have. Now, just because we say you only need five calling stations doesn't necessarily mean you only have to, have to hire five students. You'll probably have to hire 10, 15, you know, maybe, maybe upwards of 20 to have enough people to, to not overwork them and, and then next thing you know you're not going to have enough people filling it and you won't be able to, to accomplish the overall goal. You'll probably want them to at least commit to at least a, a two to three shifts out of the five minimally so that they're, they're, you don't have to have a constant training um, every week with them. But you, know, you try to get them as, as much as you can, allow for obviously um, the other schoolwork and other commitments that they have to make throughout the year. But again, you're only looking for a 12-week commitment and you're only looking for, to secure five people every shift for a three-hour period. Now, if you do more on the weekends, great. Um, you know, if you have a, uh, let's talk about the days of the week. Primarily, um, we see Monday through Thursday are, are the good calling days. Friday might not be the best day, and probably not the best day to get your students in there. And then we always suggest incorporating at least one weekend day, if not two, if you can get away with it, if you can do it. Um, Saturday mornings are usually the best days, 10 to 1 o'clock. Uh, you know, local time is usually the best time to call to reach folks. Sunday evening is, is usually the, the second uh, best day other than your, your normal evenings during the week. Um, throughout a campaign as well, especially when you're in an automated environment, you'll actually be able to keep track of those records that you'll want to call during the daytime, uh, meaning Monday through Thursday during the day. Um, the, for, the, for those people that either have a, a, a late work shift or um, maybe you only have a business phone number that you'll be able to reach them on, um, you'll be able to automate that in a much better, much easier way uh, through the system. So one of the things that that will enable you to do is, is actually see and track the quantity of records that you're building uh, to determine when you should have students come in to perform those, those call shifts. And when you look at these numbers and all of the other bullets that we've provided for you, um, sometimes overwhelms you, I can, and I can understand that, but if you sit down with someone and go through this, we don't have the time to do it today, but um, sit down and spend three, four, five hours, or maybe even a couple of days going, do an audit of what you're doing now, find out exactly what it is that you need, and a, a, a counselor or a consultant can do this for you. We, for instance, the numbers that you're looking at right now, they were taken from projects that we do. And so we know how long it's going to take, um, how many shifts per week you should have, the hours, and all of those, of course, are interchangeable. They can be uh, tailored to fit your particular situation. But what you really need is to sit down and, and spend time and do an audit. Let's move to the next slide. That, that slide right there where we're, where we're looking at numbers and, and formulas, um, that may, as, as Bill said, um, you, know, you may have questions come up. So again, feel free to, to get your question while it's maybe fresh in your mind as you're sizing your campaign and determining the number of seats, number of students that you'll, you'll need to have. 
um, we, we can move forward. Thank you. So now we, now we have our calendar in place. We have our students in place. We know how many we need to have. We're now going to hire them. We're now going to train them. And, you know, obviously you'll need to have a leader in place to be there for them, to support them, and most importantly, motivate them, right? Um, oftentimes, as, as the first bullet lists, your best team leaders actually come from your student calling team. Um, sometimes they'll emerge uh, throughout. I mean, if you're just starting a new team, you, you, you won't know, you know, who your, who your team leader is going to be. Um, but they, they will most likely emerge from that calling pool. Um, so be on the lookout. You have team leaders in there. You don't have to go out and, and you know, get a, a contact center manager at, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year to pay them for this. Um, you can have your team leaders in place and, and be there for them. The technology is a, uh, a very easy uh, system that you will put in place and, um, you know, we'll be able to have, and I think that as, as the next bullet states, you need to have an experienced company behind you to provide that ongoing support to make it easy, to give you the, the tools that, will, that you'll need on campus, uh, making the job easy. Constantly learning and improving as you go, obviously, is, is something that you will do as you move away from a dial, you know, dialing manually and moving into an automated environment. You're going to learn very quickly on how you can you can tweak your campaign in that automated fashion to get the most out of your out of your overall list and your and your student team, and have a long term vision. The reason why reason why we put that there in understanding your options, how this technology is going to help you moving into the future once you once you do it and move into the automation is is keeping your your students, especially your your key uh, students, in place after they perhaps graduate. Um, in today's world with technology, you can run your automated phone-a-thon from anywhere. You know, you, all you need is a, a computer, high-speed internet, and a headset, and you could do this from your home. You could do this from a, you know, a conference room that, that, you know, people will come in from. So, you know, have a have longer-term longer -term vision here using this technology, and you'll be able to, to keep your, your team in place for a much longer period of time. You know, the the advent of um, what are now called contact, uh, contact centers rather than call centers employ, and we'll get into this a little bit, we'll touch on it a little bit later, but employ so many different things that we can do now. The toolbox is becoming really filled up uh, with uh, a lot of different options. Um, one of the problems um, two of the problems that many automated call centers have, or any call center for that matter, is uh, contacts, number of contacts. So we um, that are in the business must come up with um, additional tools to help you um, make more contacts, and that's what automation is all about, is making as many contacts as quickly as possible and do them in many, many different ways. And we'll, uh, we'll touch on that later. Next slide, please. So we've identified our calendar in summary. You know, we've, we've identified who we're going to be calling and when. We've talked about how you're going to size your campaign. And hopefully you're, you're starting to see that it's a, it's a doable proposition. Um, it may not require as much time, effort, recruiting, hiring uh, that you need, a space, you know, all of these types of obstacles that you, you believe might be in front of you. I hope that through some of the examples that we've covered so far, um, you know, it's not a Herculean task here in front of you. Um, so how do you ensure that your campaign is being executed um, and you're reaching success? And again, I think it kind of goes back to the partner that you're, that you're selecting. I think we believe that these are some of the things that you should have in place um, to, to, have, to have that sense that you're, that you're in a place where you have support. Um, so obviously when you're moving into an automated environment, you're going to be gaining the, the necessary technology. Um, you're going to have an automated dialing system. Um, it's going to provide you all the scripting and reporting tools that you may require. That, that's the huge benefit, of course, moving into, an automated, into, an, into that automated world. 
Um, obviously building and partnering with a team and building that collaborative planning, which is, is kind of the start of what we've talked about today, is key. You need to be able to, to plan out your campaign over the course of the year, and by doing so, it will ensure a much more smooth implementation. On-campus training is going to be very important. You want a partner that's going to be able to come in and spend time with you as much as you need um, on, on campus. Um, we feel that that's important, especially uh, in the beginning. You know, if, as, you, as you make your initial thrust moving away from either a dialing a manual mode um, or moving into, uh, you know, uh, coming off from maybe you're outsourcing now and you want to start something on campus, you should have a partner that comes out on campus and spends some time with you. Uh, go through the technology, give you the tools that you're going to need and show you how to use them. And, and most importantly, work with your students and your team leaders, the folks that are, you know, the, 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 the team that's going to be actually implementing and executing the program. Custom uh, scripting, campaign setup, you know, some of these things all can be done for you. I mean, at the end of the day, what you want to be left with is to be able to manage your, your students and motivating your students. Make sure you're giving them the support. You don't want to get into a, a scenario where you're handling everything soup to nuts because now you're essentially opening up a contact center. You know, you want to have a, a partner in place that can that can support you and take some of that heavy lifting off of you. Focus on what's important. Focus on the conversations that you're that they're having, the students are having with your alumni. Get get that feedback from them and support your students. That's what you need to focus on and, and that will put you in the best position to, to reaching your goals. Ongoing virtual campaign management is also important. As we've talked about, there's there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. You can work with a partner that will run it all for you and do everything for you. Obviously, that's that comes with a certain price tag. There are other ways that you can do it, and we recommend moving into more of a virtual um, environment where you have that ongoing support, um, but not having to, to deal with the overall uh, hefty price tag. What do you need in virtual campaign setup is the overall, like we say, campaign management, monitoring, coaching, and all the reporting needs that you'll need to have on a daily basis that will be there for you off-site, remote. Once we leave the on-campus portion and give you all the training that you need, we're still going to be there with you every day from, from the beginning to the end. Next slide. One of the things that uh, I'll go ahead with the next slide, one of the things I'll say about what Joe just said, and that is this, um, training is uh, not necessarily done in the classroom anymore. It's done virtually. Um, many degrees are now obtained by uh, spending time online with professors and so on and so forth. We do the same thing. It's just in reverse. And so I, I like to bring that up to give you an example of, um, yes, it can be done and it can be done very well depending on whether the people that are doing it are prepared. And uh, I think you can see so far uh, that uh, we are prepared, but it's not, again, it's not about us. There's many others too, so uh, check them out. Go ahead. Just to continue uh, with the campaign execution, um, Obviously, you'll want to see your daily reports and, and having them delivered to you, providing you kind of the, the roadmap. Um, where have you been? Where are you seeing most of your success? Um, and making those changes on the fly. Now that you're in that automated environment, you have all of this information at your fingertips. You're not having to come in the next morning and, and go through the tick sheets and, and trying to get everything uploaded into, your, into your, your internal systems and then hopefully figuring out, OK, well, what are we going to do today? Um, instead of that, it's all going to be delivered to you on a daily basis in, now that you're in an automated mode. So these are the benefits that you're going to be starting to acquire. Obviously, post-campaign as well, you've learned a lot, and all of that analysis now can be reviewed. You'll have that partner in place to, to, to talk to you about those things and evaluate them and develop your strategies moving forward based on, based on how you did. We can move to the next slide. So now, obviously, just taking a look at, well, what does it all mean at the end of the day? Um, 
what is the value? What is the, the return on the investment here that you're making and in moving into an automated environment? Well, I think very at, at first it's easy to say the efficiencies are kind of the no-brainer, right? Um, you're going to be able to make more attempts, and if you make more attempts, you're going to be able to reach more people, and if you can reach more people, then you're going to be able to convert more pledges and gifts. Uh, pretty, pretty simple formula. Um, and especially since if you're, if you're incorporating now a student-run phonathon versus perhaps an outsourced environment, um, you're, you have a leg up already. You have a benefit there. Um, I, I think it'll, nobody can really argue the fact that everybody will want to have your students in place to run that campaign. So I think if you're, if you're putting your students in, in front of more alumni, more parents, more friends, through the efficiencies of, of automation, you're going to be able to have much better success. Um, attempting the right audience at the right time. When you're in an automated environment, it, that allows for that. When you're in a, a manual mode, you know, it's much more difficult to really keep tabs on who you should be calling next, when you should be calling them next. Um, what did you learn from one attempt to the next? Um, in a manual mode, it's very difficult to keep that all in check. Um, and be able to do that. In, a, in an automated mode, it's all done for you by the system. So you're able to pull up the right record from the right appeal at the right time, and that should overall make a big impact in your, your goals and your results. Giving uh, an example of efficiency and reporting and uh, uh, virtual care, training, etc. We have over um, 70 people, uh, approaching 100 actually, that work out of their home and have been doing so for five years. Uh, we were one of the first companies that started doing that, and in fact, one of the companies today, uh, strictly dealing in education, that um, uh, all we have is a training center. And once those uh, callers are trained, uh, they then end up in their home. So this can be done anywhere in the country. You can use, uh, as Joe mentioned at the outset of the uh, webinar, uh, alumni, um, people uh, that were working in your call center today um, may live in California, and, and your institution is in another state. They can be working from California. Uh, we've proven that that works, and it works extremely well. And uh, alumni uh, calling their classmates is uh, also a, a wonderful way to begin to take a look at uh, the long-term view, which Joe was talking about earlier. So I just wanted to bring that up and kind of underline it at this point. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. Um, there, there's so many different ways that you can you can filter your lists and, and put the right uh, contacts and run in front of the right student that's making that outbound call. Um, it, it's a lot easier. To, to manage those types of uh, strategic tactics that you put in place um, now that you're in an automated, in an automated mode. Um, to, to continue in, in this area of, of, of the value, um, obviously reporting, you're, you're going to be learning a lot. Um, you'll have a lot of knowledge at your fingertips. Um, what's working, what's, what's not. Um, sometimes knowing what's not working is, is almost more important than, than what is. But um, you know, which segments should we call tonight? Um, you know, how do you really manage that in a manual mode? It, it's just, it's a lot more difficult um, knowing where you are in overall list penetration, how many attempts you've made per record, per alumni. Um, you need to make those decisions kind of on the fly, um, and you, now you're able to. Uh, you can manage your list penetration, the list fatigue. That's, that's very important. Um, it's something that we do a lot of here where we plan skip days. Um, we'll rest a list for a night, a week, you know, a month potentially depending on how big it is and how many attempts we've made on those records. So in an automated mode, you'll be able to manage that a lot easier. And obviously, agent performance. You know, who's doing well, who's not? Um, the, the, the numbers don't lie. Um, and, and in doing it today in a manual mode, it's very difficult to really know 100%. It's just more time uh, to, to manage that. And just imagine when a caller hangs up from the conversation that they've had, and they press a, a keystroke, and out goes an email thanking them very much for uh, spending some time with us and signed by Sally Smith or Johnny Jones. Right. Uh, how you can't do that in a manual, well, you could, I guess, but 
you can't do it with any efficiency in a manual environment. And that's just one of the uh, technological um, wonderful things that have happened because of that technology that we can now do that you can't do manually. There's others too. Next slide. Cost savings um, is, is obviously, um, well, maybe not obviously, but it's a it's a value. Um, as at the at the end of the day, um, most most of the time, you're going to actually be able to shorten your overall uh, campaign because of the efficiencies that you've gained. Um, so if you if you are having a, a payroll, uh, payrolls uh, will be reduced. You'll be able to have more pledges as a as a result of being more efficient, and there you're driving a better ROI. Again, we, we talked a little bit about the reports, but knowledge is, is key, um, not only through the automated reports, but just through the tools that, that are available to you now. You can monitor both ends of that conversation. You can join those conversations. Um, from a, I'm talking from a team leader or supervisor perspective. Um, you'll have those calls recorded. Um, something, you know, it's, it's a simple thing, but, you know, it, it means a lot uh, to be able to pull a recording, listen back, learn from it, um, you know, allow those students to actually hear themselves talk, they're going to learn a lot and they're going to be able to improve greatly with some of these tools that you'll now have. And alumni feedback too. Yeah, you know, that, that's almost more important um, than, than some of the other items that we've talked about. Um, hearing what the alumni have to say, documenting that, and, and being able to pull recordings that actually will be able to speak to it. Okay, we can move to the next slide. We've, we've kind of come to the end, um, you know, this last slide, you know, just kind of reinforces, you know, who we are, what we, what we can do to help you as you start to, to think through uh, planning and moving into um, an automated environment. Um, we, can, we can speak to you or work with you and, and, and spend some time with you, have conversations, and, and just walk it through with you and answer your questions. We're here to ha and happy to do that. Um, so please feel free to, to pick up the phone and give us a call. Let us know what you have on your mind, and we'll help you just think through it. I think, I think that's a, a big component of it, and, and understanding some of the, the intricacies of, of creating an automated phonathon. Don't be afraid of it. Um, you know, come to, just come to, to the people that have done it, and we can, we can share that knowledge with you and, and make it uh, much more easy to, to, to execute. And I'd like to emphasize that there's no charge or we're not saying that you should come to us. Uh, there's many other avenues uh, that you can travel down. Um, of course, we think we do a fine job, and, and we do. But um, uh, there's no obligation, none whatsoever. And if you want to give us a call and and we'll maybe be touching base with you in the future. Um, ask away, and we'll spend as much time as necessary. Um, this is the business we're in. We're in education. When we come to work every day, we may work with many, many different institutions, but they're all in education, strictly education. That's all we do. So um, we're here to help. And please, as Joe just said, pick up the phone, give us a call, and we'll talk, no obligation. We'll have a cup of joe. <laughs> so thank you. Hopefully we've answered some good questions. Hopefully you've, you've come to learn and, and, and picked up some, some tidbits of how you, you want to move about it. Um, so go ahead uh, and, Phil, take it away. OK, that mute button got in the way. Uh, first, there's a couple of questions about will this be recorded or was this recorded and will it be posted? And yes, and um, this is what, uh, let's see, there we go. This is the, uh, the website, this, the uh, Stock Aid Group website. And you'll find the recordings under our resources tabs, our tab, along with our press releases. Um, here's our daily uh, cup of joe. Um, that we send out. Just click on the one you want to see and uh, you'll get that article. But as well, the webinars are posted right here. Click on that 
and just for example, why big data management, and you'll see the recording. Uh, you just play it right there. Okay, so that's that. Um, also on the screen we have the 800, the, the toll-free number and the website. Uh, feel free, please uh, give us a call like Bill and Joe both said. Um, you know, we, we don't charge to talk about what we love to do. So, um, and, and you know, we, we might not always be able to help you uh, as far as what we do, but uh, we can help you do what you need to do better. Did any of that make sense, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. But listen, I think we got uh, in other words, uh, well, listen, there's a couple of questions here also on uh, that need some clarity, I think. And um, I won't use any names, but uh, I thought we should get to this right away. How many calls on average does the automation guarantee? There's another one that ties in with that, and I think it's um, just a little bit of confusion on haven't heard, are you selling software program or a consulting service? So why don't, why don't, why don't you answer that one first well, and take, we'll go on. Uh, okay. Well, go ahead on the, on some of the other ones. Well, the, uh, I guess the short answer to that would be both, but we prefer not to sell just software and as they're called dialing um, hardware. What we're interested in, in doing is the virtual care. In other words, we know that with our help, you're going to be more successful. And of course, there is a charge for that. Um, thank you for the question, by the way. It gives me the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we do and why we do it. Um, so many of the other uh, companies, they will, yes, yeah, sell you just the software and off you go. You uh, just, uh, they plug you in and uh, you're on your own. And then there are those that will send in a manager and manage the entire campaign, as Joe mentioned before. And then there's us right in between. And the in between, we feel after five years is the best way to go about this. And we've cut our teeth on, as I mentioned, uh, hundreds of people that we've placed in their home over the years. And so we know that virtual care works. We know because we're in contact with them and they with us on a daily basis. Um, we also use um, cameras um, right in the way we're looking at it right now, go to meetings, etc. I I can't emphasize enough the, um, the virtual care portion of what we do because it just it's an insurance policy it gets you where you want to go uh, down a path that we've traveled thousands and thousands of times and just to in answer the other question as far as the number of uh, attempts and you can make I believe uh, Phil you said in an hour was the question yeah well, there's a couple of um... And per hour would probably be the way to go. Per hour, okay. Yeah. Um, it really depends on, on the dialing mode, but I'll, I'll recommend, and 99.9% and .9 of our calling um, is all done via a preview dialing method, which basically means that a record or an alumni's record will come up in front of the student, and all the student needs to do is click a button, and the phone will ring. Okay, so that's how they would make an attempt and that would be in a preview mode. So they'll have the opportunity to review the person's name, review the call, uh, the call, any of the information that's available, their giving history, when they graduated, and so on, um, so that they can kind of almost prepare for the call, and then one click away, and they'll be able to dial that phone. Now, obviously, in the beginning, um, you may be making upwards of 30 attempts an hour. And when you're moving right along, and the students are feeling very comfortable after a couple of nights on the phone, um, they could be approaching 60 attempts an hour. Um, we see them usually on average between 45, 50 attempts, upwards of 60 um, attempts per hour, dependent upon, of course, the number of contacts that you're actually reaching and how long those conversations are. So if you're having three, four, five minute conversations, I think you'd be, be very comfortable in the 30 to 40 range. If you're having longer conversations, though, um, you know, five, 10 minute conversations, um, then obviously your attempts per hour will be will be uh, lowered a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that answered it. Um, this is a uh, uh, there were a couple on this subject too. Do you work with all level, all tiers, um, large schools, small schools? 
Can you address that? Yes, we do. Um, I think that I can probably even give some examples. Um, one that comes to mind that uh, we work with for quite a long time, um, more than five years, in fact, is um, Drexel University. Uh, and, and there are many like that, of that size, across the country. Um, and then there are the smaller institutions, like uh, one Joe and I visited yesterday. It's called Champlain College. It's in Vermont. Uh, it's a small school growing very, very quickly. They're bringing on a, a very large online program that we're going to help them with. And uh, so we will help a small university or college do what they need to do, but also allow them to grow with us because we are working with some of the larger ones in the country. And we take that information and that experience and we uh, give it to the smaller schools when they need it. And that also tells, uh, sends me to one other thing I'd like to say. We're not here to run your organization. Um, we're here to help you. And so we're not uh, intrusive. We're not calling you all the time. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? You have your own cultural way of doing things, and we blend in with that culture. And that's what makes us so valuable, is that blending, that process. Uh, we learn as much about you as we possibly can. Uh, and that's why we invite you to spend time with us, and we spend time with you in your call center on campus. So we just become a part of you, and we allow you to grow at your own pace and don't push you towards anything in particular, but the pace can be, you can go as far as you wish because we've been, we, we work with the top and we work with, when I say top, the largest and some of the smallest throughout the country. Okay, um, we have about four minutes left, everybody, so we'll, uh, we're going to stop right at the top of the hour. There's a, a, there's a number of questions remaining, but let, let me, um, does the system integrate with Razor's Edge? And if so, how? I bel uh, yeah, I'll let you answer that, uh, Joe or Bill. Right. We can work with um, whatever requirements you have as far as your data export requirements that you'll need, whether it's in a certain format, layout. Um, we can work with you to, to give it to you in the way that you, you, you require it to make that import process as easy um, as possible. We don't want to create um, an environment where we're giving you work um, once you complete your calling. So whatever your needs are, whether it's Razor's Edge or, or some, other, some other system, um, we'll work with you up front, understand what you need, and, and give it to you. And that's what we've done today. All right. And uh, let's, well, here's another one. Uh, has your automation software ever interfaced with Genzabar, uh, J-E-N-Z-A-B-A-R. Yeah, Genzabar, I believe, is just is another. Um, yep, um, we have. I, I'm, I've had, I've had a few. I don't think there's any right now, um, but there's, there's been a few that were originally on Genzabar and they moved away from it. Um, I don't know if that's a sign that Genzabar is not serving, uh, um, serving industries well or not, but. Um, Yes, we, I've had some familiarity with that. Um, we, have, we have clients that use that today, and so absolutely. Okay. Great. Again, I think it kind of just goes back to understanding your requirements, um, your layouts, and we can, we'll, we'll meet any, any challenge. It sounds like we can make it, uh, make it work if we need to with, with whatever software. Um, one last question. What other services do you offer to assist us? I, I guess that means in the fundraising world. Um, well, I mean, obviously, the, it starts at the top with the, the call contact center type of, of services. So whether it's on, why don't you, can you go back to the, the last slide, uh, Phil? You, maybe you can bring that back up, and that will answer this question pretty well. Um, the off-campus, uh, meaning you can come to us where we actually will put our employees on the, on the phones and speak to your alumni. So we'll be executing the campaign for you. 
The on-campus is what we've spent a lot of time here today talking about as far as implementing the technology on your campus, assisting you with hiring and training your students, and then delivering all of the back office type of support, building your scripts, writing your scripts, uh, programming those scripts for the students to use on, in that automated environment, uh, providing you all of those daily report requirements that you'll need, um, the collaboration and working with you, the fulfillment services. We didn't really talk a lot about that, but sending out those pledge letters the next day or even the 30, 60, 90 day cycle we can, we can provide. Um, to the direct mail, um, creative, print, fulfillment, anything that you'll need to do in, 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 uh, in your um, overall Phonathon campaign throughout the year, um, we, can, we can assist you with and we can time it um, with your overall uh, Phonathon uh, calendar. Automated messaging uh, is another um, where we'll have a ringless message or a broadcast message and that's simply a pre-recorded message um, that we'll be able to blast to an audience. Um, a broadcast message is more about them picking up the phone and listening to it and perhaps into, you know, actually engaging with that message. Uh, for an example, like a Press One campaign where they'll have an opportunity to um, have an IVR or some kind of engagement with that, with that message. Um, a ringless voicemail is where we're trying not to, um, not to intrude um, by ringing the phone. Um, so we're attempting to implant that message, that pre-recorded message, onto a voicemail system without ever ringing the phone up front. The website strategy that we have listed here as well, other social media uh, driven services we also have. So we can, we can talk to you in a variety of different ways um, that puts you, in a, puts you in the best light to work with your, your engaging your constituents. Okay, uh, that brings us right to the top of the hour. Uh, any final comments uh, real quickly, Joe or Bill? We'll start with Joe. No, no, nothing really. Just thank you for your time, and, and I hope that you learned what you had hoped to have learned, and um, hopefully it gets you thinking. And as we said, feel free to give us a call, and we can talk more about your individual needs. Ditto. I say the same <laughs> thing, and um, we're here to help. Um, and all of you here, by the way, probably have received a call from um, uh, one of our people, uh, Pat Sanders. Um, she'll be checking in with you in short order to find out if uh, you have any interest in knowing more about us or about what we talked about. Uh, once again, we're here to help. Real good. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so very much. Um, attendees, we sure appreciate you. Without you, we don't have webinars. Um, and those questions that we did not get to, Pat, we'll, we'll ask you about those and give you an answer. If there's any clarity needed, she'll, she'll ask you for that, but we'll get you some answers. So thank you very much. Please watch your, uh, your email boxes. We'll be sending out the next webinar invite within the, the next few days and look forward to seeing you on those two down the road. If you have any ideas for webinars, don't ever hesitate to call us. Our number's listed on the screen there. And if you'd be, be interested in talking about your fundraising successes or what you've learned in the industry, please give us a call. We're looking for guest speakers all the time. And uh, it makes it more exciting sometimes than just Joe and Bill, as much as I love you guys. That's right. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we appreciate you very much. Thanks, and, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now.